Hey everyone, in this tutorial we're going to take a look at how you can make your color adjustments to your SVG objects in Cartoon Animator 5. To do so, we'll use the grouped color feature that allows you to customize and arrange the shapes of your vector image. With free embedded content, the colors have already been grouped, but here you'll learn how to take care of this with free external content. I'm going to start off by downloading some free SVG content from the freesvg.org website. You can use popular tags to find high quality content, however in this case I'm just going to search manually and download this businessman actor and classroom background for our demo. Once everything is downloaded, let's move on to color adjustments and automatic grouping. I'll start by dragging in the classroom SVG and define it as a scene object. We'll then continue to import the businessman the same way, only this time I'll define it as a bone actor which will automatically send us into composer mode. From there, I'm going to open up the SVG color adjustment tool. You'll see right away that there is an unknown group. If I adjust any of the parameters at this point, everything will be modified together since we haven't defined any subgroups. To do so, I'll enter into the SVG Group Editor tool. Here you have the option to automatically group everything by color or by sprites, and there's also a custom option. In this case, I'm going to auto detect by color and go ahead and process. You'll then see a bunch of groups created according to color. If you pick a color in the viewport, that same color group will be selected in the SVG Group Editor and highlighted in the viewport. The same color will also be split into subgroups due to the outline, which is a feature with vector format files. Now if we head over to the SVG Color Adjustment tool, you'll see those same groups displayed, which will allow you to adjust their parameters separately. You can choose a completely different color from the color swatch, or else do some subtle tweaking with the parameter sliders. Automatic grouping can often be enough, but you may want to also manually define the groups for more detailed editing. To start off with that, in the group editor, you'll want to add an empty group as our main group and rename it to character. And then another named clothing. I can also rename existing groups. In this case, I'm renaming the hair group appropriately and also renaming the hair highlight group. To clean things up a bit, I can multi-select the two groups and then click on Group to merge them into a single group. You can also use the Ctrl C hotkey. We can name the parent group here and then drag it over to the main character group as it will be part of the character and not the clothing. We can repeat the process with the character shirt and then drag that subgroup to the clothing main group. If we move on to the eyes, you can see that there are separate groups for the whites of the eyes, the black parts, and also the highlight. I'll again simply organize everything into the appropriate subgroups so that we can adjust all of the eye groups together simultaneously. This reference image here shows the recommended convention and structure for organizing your character's shapes and colors. This is the same structure used by all of the embedded characters in Cartoon Animator 5, and we recommend that you also use it to keep everything consistent. It's especially important to ensure that you have a separate outline group to take advantage of this vector-specific capability. Now that we have everything organized according to the recommended group structure, we can do some color adjustments. As an example with the hair group, I want the main hair and highlights to be similar colors. So what I'll do to start off is select the hair parent group and change both subgroups to a blonde color. From there, I can continue on to brighten up the highlight group so that the colors are more coordinated. For the eyebrow group, I can use the pick screen color button to select the hair so that the colors match. We can also get entirely rid of certain groups by reducing the opacity as well. I'll repeat the process a few times to adjust the various group colors. 
It's relatively the same process for each group, just use the various techniques available to define the colors. You can also use the color adjustment tool in stage mode as well, so there's no need to continue repeatedly going back to composer mode to make minor changes. Here, I'm simply adjusting the various outline group values so that it blends in a bit better with the style of the classroom background. You can then simply duplicate the character from the toolbar or click and drag while holding down the control key. I'll flip the second character and then use the reset feature to take all of the colors back to default. That's really about all there is for this tutorial guys. Thanks so much for watching and I'll see you in the next video.